Hello, I'm Colin Slaybach, and today I'm here with Dave Littell and Bob Klein, and we're discussing opportunities for Roth conversions. So Bob, you had a blog post on your website that was titled, The Seven Opportunities for Partial or Full Roth IRA Conversions. Could you go into more detail about the seven? Sure. We've talked quite a bit about the fact that people are reluctant to pay tax on conversions, so you need to do tax planning and see if your situation would be amenable to doing the Roth IRA conversion. So there's seven I'd like to talk about. First one, if you're under 72 and you're retired and you have low to moderate taxable income, I found that that's a potentially good situation for a Roth IRA conversion. Right, and sometimes that's the case because people are deferring their Social Security to 70, another strategy that we often encourage. And so, you know, if they have some other after-tax income, uh, they might be able to have fairly low tax rates in that period right before 70 and after retirement. Right? Yep. So that's one situation. Second one applies to people under 72 as well, although not necessarily. If you have a large amount of long-term capital gains relative to other income, this is why I'm really big on building up non-retirement investment accounts. So you open yourself up for the possibility of long-term capital gains and if your long-term capital gains are such that they comprise a large amount of your total income, you could avail yourself of the opportunity to take the long-term capital gains rates, which are much more favorable, either as low as 0%, depending upon your other income, 15% or 20%. Okay. So that's something that gets often overlooked is how much do you have in the way of long-term capital gains relative to other income. Now, it's also important to have that tax diversification across all three categories as well, though. Yeah, it's absolutely important for that reason. Yeah. Okay. So third situation, and this I come across you know, from time to time as well, sale of rental properties where you have a large passive loss carryover that you haven't been able to use up until now. And you get two benefits there potentially, assuming the property has appreciated, it frees up that passive loss carry forward, number one, and then number two, back to the long-term capital gains, especially out in California where you know people are used to a fair amount of appreciation, have been, you can have a long-term capital gain on top of that that gets taxed at a favorable tax rate. So between those two, that can set you up to absorb additional income in the form of a Roth IRA conversion. Then number four, not as common, but for people that established charitable remainder trust, there's typically a sizable charitable contribution deduction associated with that. So once again, you know, you're looking for situations where you have potentially deductions that can offset Roth IRA conversion income, and that's certainly one of them when the situation presents itself. And it also, it's an opportunity for clients that are on the fence about doing a charitable remainder trust to point that out to them as well. I think today we have seen one change that under the current tax law, fewer people are itemizing. So I guess we do see the need, to, if you're making charitable contributions, a lot of people are sort of bunching up their contributions, or in this case, you're talking about using a particular uh, charitable strategy, which is to build a trust and make all the contributions at one time. Is that something you see in in your practice? Yeah, that is. But insofar as it relates to the Roth IRA conversion itself, it's the larger charitable contributions that people make when they, they could be from bunching or from setting up a CRT. Yeah, either way, yep, that can occur. Number five is sometimes overlooked also because people don't keep track of what's called basis in IRAs a lot of times. When you make non-deductible traditional IRA contributions, you have basis in your traditional IRAs. So it's important to keep track of that. There's a tax form 8606 on which that's done every year. And you know that should be used to track your basis in the IRAs. And the basis can be used against your Roth IRA conversion. Having said that, you have to be careful because you can't necessarily use all of your basis. You have to look at what the value is of all of your traditional IRA accounts. When you do a Roth IRA conversion, it's not necessarily just the account that you're converting. Right, in the RACP curriculum, we talk about that quite often, and you're going to figure out the tax treatment of a conversion, and you have some portion that's non-taxable, you have to use this pro rata rule. So exactly. That's what you're really talking that's about. That's what here. I'm referring mm -hmm. to. Yeah. 
Number six, if you're a surviving spouse and let's say you're in a low tax bracket and you have children, beneficiaries that are in higher tax brackets and let's say you're not dependent on the IRA for your retirement funds, then you could be a potentially good candidate for a Roth IRA conversion. You could pay some taxes at low rates and then your children who are in higher rates, that's gonna lessen their burden. Yeah, and that's a very powerful strategy because once you've done the conversion and then when that person dies, you can still usually stretch out the payments. So you can generate a lot more, even after death, a lot more tax-free income. So that can be a, a very tax-efficient way to leave money to your heirs. Yeah. yeah, and that's why it's always important to keep in mind whenever you're thinking about Roth IRA conversions, you, know, you have to look at your situation and it's not necessarily about all about you. You know, it's not just about what happens during your lifetime. To the extent you have heirs, you know, it's important to keep them in mind as well. The seventh situation for doing a partial or full Roth IRA conversion doesn't come up every day, but once in a while it does. If you have a net operating loss that can absorb a Roth IRA conversion, that's number seven. So Bob, those are all great ideas. I was thinking of one other one that I heard at a seminar not too long ago, that um, if somebody goes into a CCRC, especially when they pay a big upfront fee, uh, that a significant portion of that could be d treated as deductible medical expenses. And they pointed out that, that you know, that's another big deduction that could be an opportunity, a tax opportunity for doing Roth conversions. Could yeah, that? that's a great point. Also, it's not necessarily just the upfront fee. It can be an ongoing situation where a client, it's older clients, and it's determined that a large portion of their uh, CCRC fees are related to medical expenses. So they may have an ongoing situation where it presents the opportunity to do Roth IRA conversions. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And or just simply taking IRA distributions, not even doing a conversion, just taking IRA distributions and putting it into non-retirement accounts either way. Thank you, gentlemen, for that insightful information. This video was made possible by the New York Life Center for Retirement Income.